Okay, so we just finished our uh, seven dimensions of applied behavioral analysis. You made your first seven SAFMED cards, which is fantastic. So let's just talk about the term of applied behavioral analysis and where else you might hear that. Um, I'm sure within school systems, if you're an employee of a public school system or private, you've heard the term ABA or maybe there's an ABA classroom. Um, essentially, that means that there's a classroom that's using teaching principles that are built off of scientifically um, demonstrated effective learning strategies. These could include things like doing DTI, discrete teaching um, trials, where you're sitting in a more structured environment using mass trial teaching format, or maybe token economies, reinforcement principles, maybe there's a lot of behavioral plans in play, so staff are trained heavily on how to provide planned ignoring strategies for negative behaviors, maybe reinforcement strategies for positive behaviors, uh, a lot of redirection techniques. Um, so those things all kind of go into an ABA classroom. Then you might also hear the term um, verbal behavioral therapy. That's also part of applied behavioral analysis, okay? Because we're using reinforcement principles to increase the effectiveness of teaching a verbal repertoire. Um, there's also pivotal response training. There's incidental teaching, uh, which is kind of like ABA, but instead of using DTI, direct teaching instruction, where you really modify and create a very structured, sterile environment to be able to teach certain skills, incidental teaching takes opportunity of things that are naturally occurring within the environment, okay? Sometimes you hear this almost like a floor model, where you sit on the floor, there's a variety of play objects or things um, to engage with and the child kind of picks up one and you go with it. You, you use it. You say, oh, yep, that's a car. Say vroom, vroom, beep, beep. They model, they, um, or you model, and then they imitate you. Vroom, vroom, beep, beep. And then you give them tickles. Good job, that is the car, you know, providing reinforcement. But that's a naturally occurring opportunity to work on a verbal repertoire of an object in play, all right? So incidental teaching is also a part of applied behavioral analysis. And then you have other things like positive behavioral systems. Um, I'm sure you've heard of PBIS. Um, that's a public school intervention for a wide behavioral support program. But again, that's part of applied behavioral analysis because we're using reinforcement procedures, making it more likely to motivate students to engage with work in a public school setting, okay? so. Applied behavioral analysis is a term that you will probably start hearing often, and hopefully this will give you a little bit better idea of exactly what that means. All right. So um, now that we've gotten ABA out of the way, we are going to start talking a little bit about graphing. So as you can see, I've had this graph next to me as we've been going over some of our terms. Um, and with the pure purpose, because we are going to use this in a functional manner, to start graphing how well you do with your ABA terms so that you can self-assess your study ability as you use SAF meds each day. Remember, it's say all fast, each minute, every day shuffle, right? So each day you're supposed to be studying for at least one minute. Preferably you do a little bit more than that because that one minute is technically just a timing or a quick probe or test to see how well, how accurately, how fluently, how automatic you are in that terminology. Um, but in order for us to do that, like we talked about before, we need to get a few more SAFMED cards. So we're going to talk about the basic principles of a graph. It's a little bit ahead of curriculum wise. If you're following our PowerPoint, um, it's further in, but this is a great incidental, naturally occurring opportunity to start talking about the skills that go into graphing and the essential components of a graph. 